Hello, and welcome to Radio Waves by Todderbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, plus do-it-yourself kits, then please subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Yeah. Um, in front of us, we have a solderless do-it-yourself crystal radio kit evaluation board that I purchased off of eBay for $22.00. And for my guy in England, his eBay is TGS1950. TGS1950. Check them out. I'll put the link in the description down below. Uh, amazing kits. Uh, I built a couple of them. The Foxhole Radio Kit, the Porth Kerno Kit, the shortwave one. And now I got this one. This one intrigued me because you don't need to solder anything. I figured, what the heck? And it has a cool little extra feature in here, which we're going to show you. So this is the box it came in. Pretty cool. So it ships this stuff. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right. So this is what's in the box. We get some paperwork, which we'll go over after I show you what's in the box. Yeah, look at that. So we got the board, radio evaluation board. I didn't measure this, but it's pretty small. Let's go ahead and just measure it together. You're looking at, what is that, three and a quarter inch? By about, oh, an inch and three eighths. And a, probably about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty sturdy PCB too. So what he's done is he has pre-soldered the terminal blocks so you can wire up your resistors without having to solder. That's nice. So already got the phone jack installed. Looks like he's got an amplifier type uh, setup going. He's got a diode, you know, where you're out for your audio out. This must be to control these capacitors. I'm guessing it one one is maybe this out is for one and this in is for two. I think I read something like that. Uh, okay, tune tells you what's doing. So yeah, pretty cool little setup. Um, on the bottom, it's got the connections for your clips, your alligator clips. And it looks like they're standoffs. So there's three little, four little spots for the standoffs. And he includes those too. Let's go ahead and show you the parts. So you get a headphone, earphone, excuse me, ear, single ear. Nice to get, those crystal ones. So you can hear what's going on with no power. I love these no power kits. <laughs> Grid free, baby, you know it. Uh, we got some wire. We got, uh, looks like a ground and some hookup wire and alligator clips. Okay, I'm guessing this is going to help hook up some neat features, which I'm going to show you. Looks like we got a bag full of stuff here. We got the standoffs. We got a resistor there. Looks like little, I don't know, these look like ends for wires, maybe. So maybe it's a crimp on deal. So we'll try that out. We got some screws there I told you about, the germanium diode. We got some inductors. Looks like we got four different ones to experiment with. Cool, I like experimentation. And we got more alligator clips and more hookup wire, it looks like. Yeah, so I like it. And then the fun part, oh, save that for last. Fun part's for last. We got some uh, aerial wire. It just throws it in with the kit. Nice. And he's got, it looks like the... The blade already hooked up, so you just clip that on or, or hook it up, however he has it set up. Neat. And the best for last, let's put the box aside. This little guy right here, check this out. I never had one of these. I think it's so cool. It's a cat whisker. Yeah, instead of your germanium diode, use this de as your detector. Yeah, that's pretty old-fashioned. When you look at those radios from 1920s, 19, you know, when Radio First was happening, they had these in there. And they, you know, they were bigger, of course, and you could manually tune it, and you'd move the little, those little posts around different spots on the diode or diode crystal to get the uh, good signal. That's where the the term crystal radio set comes from, because it uses crystal. Pretty neat. That's a cool little feature. I think he's got the kit without this piece for like twenty bucks, and for like two bucks more, you get this. Well, why not? So. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So what we're going to do is I'm going to fade to black here. Just throw the stuff here so you can see what I got going. And I will have this 
assembled. And maybe if I can, I'll, I'll put up a couple pictures of how the build process went. But I'm thinking it's going to be pretty simple and easy to put together. Okay, be right back. Hello, and I'm back. Here are pictures of the build process. In this picture, I added the brass standoffs to the board and built all the connecting wires. This was the most time-consuming part of the build. I had a good voltmeter to test the continuity of the wires. In the second picture here, I added the resistor, the germanium diode, and the inductor. I bent the legs so the components present well. The seller of this board did this, and I liked how it looked. In this next picture, I added the aerial and ground wires. I attached my headphone and went out to find some stations. Yeah, and I did. Found stations. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, it's exciting. <laughs> uh, this last picture, uh, these are extra parts for later experimentation. He gives you three extra inductors to experiment with to change your frequency range. The cat whisker to change the way the, the crystal radio detects signals. And the aerial wire that I did not use that I may use in the future outside. So pretty cool. All right, let's go to the instructions. Here you go. Talked about these instructions. I didn't show them to you in the beginning, but we'll show them to you now. So he kind of goes over what I just showed you in those pictures of the build process. He has a little different order if you want to pause and read. Okay. And yeah, pause, read. There's no really particular order. You really can't mess it up. Um, so the the part you can mess up is if you don't measure your wires right from like two to five or excuse me, one to five or two to 10. Uh, if you make the wire too short, you're in trouble. It's better to make them a little longer than shorter. He gives you just enough wire on that blue piece of wire to make these. So you want to measure twice, cut once. We've heard that a few hundred times. <laughs> so that's that first page. The second page, he goes into um, experimenting with the cat whisker. And I'll talk about that. It's pretty cool. Fitting an amplifier, optional. Um, there's actually on the board, uh, you can see here he has a way of hooking a 9-volt battery to the board, which is good. Increasing the frequency range with the three extra inductors he gives you. Um, he gives you the 470 Pico Henry inductor to try, and you get 1.2 to 3.6, or using one capacitor, 1.5 to 5.19. But for some reason, no matter which setting I used, one or two capacitors, I got way at the bottom. I got 670. What the heck? Usually on my crystal radio sets, I'll get like 720 or 780, real strong stations. But I got 670. <laughs> and that's all I got with the 470. I'm going to think about changing the inductor to see what I can get with the different ones. I know what these these different values have gotten shortwave signals once or twice on that uh, other kit I built, the Porth Kernel kit. So that was a fun one. Fault finding talks about uh, if you're having problems with the radio, that's what you do. And the last page, he goes over experiments talks about the term mutual inductance. This is a really cool thing. Um, if you're building a science fair project with your uh, child or you're just interested in yourself or the science, um, it's neat and you can gain some knowledge of what's happening when you do this. So kind of goes over that. You can pause and read that experiment. And then he's got the circuit and that's really cool. So you can actually um, draw this up if you were presenting this you know, at a, at a fair and you're like, this is how the signal comes through and this is how I'm listening to it. And radio evaluation board. So yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you the tools I used. I used a pair of pliers to crimp my wires and to crimp the wire and alligator clips. Yay! Uh, of course, before I could crimp those wires, I just stripped them. <laughs> really cool pair of craftsmen. They went out of business in my town, which I was pretty sad. They had really good sales. I think I picked this up for like five bucks or something. Amazing. I know, but I don't think I can get a warranty anymore. But um, he uses 22 gauge wire. Let's go to 26. It's really nice. Plus, it's got a cutter right here. Just a nice, handy thing to have. If you don't have a pair of these, you know, buy a good quality pair. I don't know where these are. They made ah, USA. I like that. Look at that. Made in USA. Sweet. So, there's that. And of course, you'll need a flat blade screwdriver to adjust your tuning and your terminal blocks. <laughs> That's how you put your components in. So, yep, those are the kind of tools you will need to do the build. You don't need any soldering iron or any soldering experience. So this is good for those who say, wow, I, you know, Todd Bird, I can't build a radio kit because I don't have a soldering iron. I don't want to learn how to solder. Well, with this, if you take your time, you don't have to worry about solder. Just learn the proper stripping techniques 
and proper crimping technique and you'll be no problem whatsoever i'm sure you guys know how to use a screwdriver so <laughs> so we'll go ahead and move these out of the way and i'll show you kind of uh let's see i'll show you on some of these connectors i built so let's go ahead and i'm going to unhook one of these wires from my detector so this is kind of how it, you build it so this is the wire to go to the cat whisker for the experimentation with using a crystal instead of the germanium diode and the little those little blue things i showed you earlier you put the wire your strip wire through to the, the silver tube and then you use those pair of pliers and you smash the uh the only the metal part down you don't crimp the plastic you break that off so you only smash the metal part <laughs> remember that it doesn't say any directions but it's kind of self-explanatory sort of but if you're new or if your child doesn't know you know supervise them that's how you do it you just crimp the metal part and then with attaching the wire to the alligator clip it's real easy just strip off about a good three-eighths of an inch to a half inch I think I did half inch and I tightened it up and I ran through a little hole and that is as to steady the wire and then I folded the two tabs and it's kind of cool because each tab is opposing each other one goes over the wire nicely and one goes over the insulated part of the wire so you line that up and then you bend it in to hold it in so it's nice and strong and then I used a voltmeter to test the continuity to make sure that they were making connection so cool and then that will connect to my cat whisker so we'll talk about that in a second cat whisker okay so let's go ahead and show you the board and I have my earphone still on it there it is all put together you guys saw in the pictures I'm just gonna do like a nice little full view of it radio evaluation board pretty cool um, just a neat way to build a crystal radio set no power required and you can listen to the radio uh, like I say get one station but hey you can still listen to it at least it's news and I can know what's going on in the world um, pretty cool and if I had a longer wire, I could probably get more stations. There's the bottom with the standoffs. One thing I noticed, if you're trying to uh, build a kit and you want to mount this to like a box, which I'm going to show you how I'm going to do mine, um, you probably have to space uh, with some washers underneath here, which you left room for, which I'm glad. It looks like you can put some small washers there to space these out so you have some more thread so you can screw in from the other side too um, because he used pretty long screws here. So I don't think he intended it to be mounted to something, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mount it to something. It's going to be cool. So here's your germanium diode, and this came in great. Uh, like I said, with this um, 470 Pico Henry inductor, I was able to get one station 670. I had another one coming in. I think it might have been 720, uh, but uh, yeah, it's experimenting with those. But the yeah, germanium diode, I took this one out, and I put this in the place on number 6 and 8. The cat whisker. Let's see if I can zoom that in. This is cool. If you guys know anything about this, this is the old way of doing it. Back before they had germanium diodes, they had this. Well, actually, they had I think a Galena crystal, and they had really cool like like oval um, stands and special you know special like uh, brass wire or copper wire. I can't remember what kind of metal wire they used. Thirty gauge something wire, and they had a little whisker into it, and you had this like bigger armature with like a wood handle. And you would move it all around the crystal surface to get the best signal. thought that was amazing. And sometimes they would encapsulate the crystal and protect the crystal so it wouldn't get damaged. Kind of neat. And sometimes even had glass tubes so you could see the crystal and see where the, the whisker was going. Just a cool little setup. This here is a piece of iron pyrite crystal. And I was able to get a good signal out of this. It took a while. It took about five minutes of moving this around. And I found the best spot for it was moving this little right to the tip top of this crystal I got like my best signal like right on the top just like that <laughs> and you know probably because there's some extra material there that wasn't con conducting properly but yeah it, it was just a lot of fun this is a neat way to showcase a different way of detecting and being able to draw those uh, audio signals out of the frequency it's pretty neat so and those just clip on there okay, I'm gonna put that aside and then I wanted to show you you know he mentioned experimenting so I have an old radio and I'm thinking about taking this out the coil and the wires and then I'm thinking about taking the tuner capacitor out and having a separate setup going so I can see if I can tune with this coil and this with no power yeah if I remember right the old science fair kits had that they had a kind of a tuning coil like this or a tuning capacitor and a coil like that you used so pretty fun. I'm going to do that. These old radios come in handy. If you ever get a junk radio, don't throw it away. You can always use it for parts. Always. So keep it handy. 
You might need a volume potentiometer and this might work. So always keep it handy. So there you go. Tip of the day. <laughs> and this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to show you my little, this is my end thing right here. So I know a guy that loves cigars and he gives me his boxes when he's done. I got a bunch of cigar boxes. So I thought about mounting this here. And I thought about mounting. This is pretty cool. I'm going to mount my inductors like here, like off to the side. And I'm going to put holes. And all the wiring is going to be wired underneath and come up underneath into the board here. Which would be really cool. And I'm going to have a switch bank. Either I'm going to use a header material with jumpers. Or I'm going to use probably like a, a dip switch bank. You know, where it has like 12 switches. And you can switch, you know, and have a little, a little chart saying which inductor equals which switch positions. Be kind of cool. Then over here, I was going to mount the cat whisker and I was going to take the germanium diode out of that connection and put it like here or here just kind of showcase the cool components like laid out and then I'll have it all wired up underneath so I have a switch bank over here for the crystals and then possibly maybe if I move this down a little bit I'll put the ferrite um, antenna here and then I could have uh, it switchable you know between the inductors and to the ferrite bar and then I could have another switch going from the C and D here that he mentioned to the external capacitor. And maybe I'll find a way to put it here, put it on the side where I have a tuning knob. So it'd just be a lot of fun. So there's a lot of cool things you can do. And it's just ideas. Um, you know, if you're helping a child build a cool science fair project, you could do it simple. You don't have to kind of get crazy like I'm thinking about doing. But you could also have fun with it too. You can expand on it. So you can build the basic board, do the basic thing, but to keep the interest alive for yourself and for your child or, or young adult or teenager if he's got time and doesn't want to play games on his phone and wants to learn about radios <laughs> or she um yeah this is just a really cool way of doing it so yeah i really enjoy building this kit um it's a great way to enter the hobby and not need soldering experience i'm really happy to uh present this to you guys so you can see that um so check out his link below i'll have a link there you know for his ebay link to buy this board I believe this was 22 with the little crystal and $20 shipped without it. You know, so you have this. This still works just great. So if you don't need to have this particular piece, you can save two bucks. But for two bucks, this is a great learning tool. I liked it. I like first time I ever used one, so I thought it was neat. And uh, yeah, get yourself a nice kit. So yay, if you like the video, big thumbs up. If you like Totterbert, big thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know if I'll get a big thumbs up for that, but big thumbs up. Like it. Um Subscribe if you're new, if you like do-it-yourself kits, if you like uh, powered kits, crystal radio kits. I'm doing about one a month or maybe a little bit more often because I really enjoy building them. And hit the little bell icon. Ding, 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 ding. Todd made a new video. Get on it. Watch it. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, don't miss anything. And then comment below what you think about the radio evaluation board, crystal radio set. Would you buy this for a youngster? Would you buy it for yourself to experiment knowing now you don't need any soldering experience whatsoever. You just need to know how to use a wire stripper, a pair of pliers, and a screwdriver. It's all you need. And you can, you know, and run a little wire. <laughs> and have even get, they even give you a headphone. Plug it in and off you go. So I think it's the way to go. Definitely cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Take care. And goodbye.